Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to AMC Mailbag, the mailbag show here on AMC Movie Talk, where all we do is take your mailbag questions. And you can email us anytime, by the way, 24 7 at amcmovietalk at gmail.com. Now, every day we take a couple of your mailbag questions on AMC Movie Talk, Monday through Friday. But on the weekends, we do these mailbag shows where all we do is take your questions. My name is John Campia. I am the editor-in-chief of AMC Movie Talk. And if you're watching this on Saturday, this is Saturday's edition, i got to uh, apologize that the show's going up a bit late. I to, I'm, I've been under the weather all day. I, I don't know what the problem is. I just I woke up today com- feeling completely off. Uh, last night, Dennis and I... Uh, drove to San Diego um, to check out the place that we're going to be staying at Comic-Con, which is a pretty awesome place, and also to scope out locations for our AMC Movie Talk meet and greet. And um, last year at Comic-Con in San Diego, what we did is we had this meet and greet at a hotel in the lobby, at the, the bar in the lobby, and just invited people to come down and meet us. We said we're going to be hanging out here from, I think it was on a Thursday, from like 6 to 8 o'clock. If you want to come meet and say hi, Come on down and meet us there because that's where we're going to be. And I, I just, we couldn't believe how many of you guys actually came down and met. And it was awesome. And we said right away, we got to do this again next year. So this year, we are going to be doing a meet and greet again. I'll let you know the time and location a little bit later. Um, but I hope you guys can come down and meet us. But speaking of Comic-Con, little housekeeping issues here. In case you didn't heard, uh, our annual Masters of the Web panel is going on on Thursday of Comic-Con. I'll give you the exact time a little bit later. But Thursday of Comic-Con, and this year the theme is comic book movies, and we are doing a panel all of YouTube movie pundit personalities. We've got Jeremy Johns from Fandango and DC All Access. We've got Tiffany Smith. We've got uh, the Schmoes know. we got uh, Christian Harloff, who's also a member of AMC here, and his partner Mark Ellis. Uh, we've got John Schnapp. We've got myself and our special guest this year because every year we like to have a special guest and I am very stoked because if you guys have ever heard me blab on about Spartacus or blab on about Arrow if you watch my Arrow after show you know that I am a huge fan of Manu Bennett uh, who uh, plays Crixus in Spartacus he plays Slade or also known as Deathstroke in Arrow Uh, he plays Azog the the white orc in the Hobbit movies Um, the dude is just awesome and I am so excited that he's going to be our special guest on the panel this year so I really hope that if you're going to be a comic Con, you decide to uh, make us a part of your day. Come on down. We're going to be talking about comic book movies for the panel, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So listen, before we get into the mailbag questions, a rather significant piece of movie news dropped yesterday, um, right as we were finishing up AMC Movie Talk, so we didn't, weren't able to get it on the show, but it is an extremely significant piece of movie news that we should really touch on, and that is that this, director Ryan Johnson who did films, uh, I mean, his last film was Looper that he did with Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, which was just awesome, by the way. He has officially been hired on to both write and direct Star Wars Episode Eight and Star Wars Episode Nine. Now, if you're somebody like me, and you are a massive fan of Ryan Johnson. His film Brick was incredible. Um, he, I, I thought Looper was so creative and imaginative and original, just so great. Um, This is really exciting news. And it really does highlight the fact that Lucasfilm and Disney are really committed to getting young, talented new filmmakers involved with this uh, Star Wars because we've got J.J. Abrams kicking everything off and setting the tone with Star Wars Episode 7. We've got Josh Trank coming on to do one of the spinoffs. And now we've got Ryan Johnson. Uh, doing one of that. And of course, um, you know, you, you just can't ignore how good and how talented this dude is. And, and uh, Gareth Edwards as well has been hired to do one of the Star Wars spinoffs as well. So you got like J.J. Abrams, uh, Josh Trank, Gareth Edwards. Now we got Ryan Johnson. You're getting this incredibly talent rich um, team of directors and people working on this universe. And this is really ridiculously exciting. I am beyond pumped for this announcement. I think this is great. I The one surprise to me was that I think a lot of us assumed that 
JJ would probably be on for maybe episode seven and episode eight. Like none of us expect that he would direct all Star Wars now between now and forever. But I, I think a lot of us expected him to do at least two. Now, this doesn't preclude, of course, J.J. from directing a spinoff film down the road. Uh, it doesn't preclude him from directing Star Wars Episode X whenever they get around to that. But uh, that was the one little surprising piece to me about this. But I'm sure we will go into more detail and more analysis about the Ryan Johnson hiring for the new Star Wars films. A lot more on AMC Movie Talk on Monday. I at least just wanted to mention it at this point. Okay, folks. Well, with all that out of the way, it's time for us to get to your mailbag questions. That's what this show is about. So let's dive into it and get to question number one. And question number one today comes to us from NJ who writes, there have been some major incredible movies this year and we are only halfway through it. Uh, like Lego, Neighbors, X-Men Days of Future Past, Captain America 2, How to Train Your Dragon 2, 22 Jump Street, Edge of Tomorrow, and some great smaller movies like Lock and Enemy. My question is, which one is your favorite up to now? And do you think any future movies this year will beat your favorite? Here's hoping for Apes on Horses, of course, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and Interstellar. Um, well, it's it's a great question, and you're right, NJ. Uh, this has been an incredible year for film. We've, we've seen some really pleasantly surprising films. I don't think any of us, I mean, I think we all had high hopes for Captain America 2. I don't think any of us expected Captain America 2 Winter Soldier to be as good as it was. A lot of us had, had hopes for X-Men Days of Future Past. I don't think any of us were prepared for how good that movie has been. I think a lot of us thought Edge of Tomorrow was going to suck because it's one of the worst marketing campaigns ever. Worst trailers for a film I mean, up there in the top 10 worst trailers for a film ever completely misrepresented the movie because that movie, the trailers didn't give you any indication of how fun it is, how funny it is, how exciting it is. And it's a smart movie too. I mean, Edge of Tomorrow was just so great. Um, and then of course you got your animated films like How to Train Your Dragon 2, Lego. I mean, it's been a great year for film. Planet of the Apes obviously looks wonderful and magnificent, um, but there's a couple of others we should keep our eyes on too. Number one that I'm very interested in is the new Brad Pitt film, Fury, about the tank crew. I, I believe it's a World War II tank crew film. That looks fascinating. Uh, of course, the next Hunger Games film. I mean, who would have thought I would be looking forward to Hunger Games so much, but I'm telling you, the last Hunger Games movie just blew most of us away. I mean, it was just so rock solid good. And then don't forget about maybe my most anticipated film still left to come this year, aside from maybe The Hobbit, um, is Gone Girl, the new David Fincher uh, film with Ben Affleck in the leading role, Rosamund Pike. Um, just that film, just, uh, I, I hope it's good. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say my favorite this year so far is between Cap 2 and, uh, and X-Men. I'm... It's hard to say, man. I went to go see X-Men Winter Soldier a few more times in theater than I went to go see X-Men Days of Future Past. And I'm going to see X-Men Days of Future Past at least one or two more times in theater before it leaves. But I, I think right now, by the narrowest of margins, I'll say X-Men Days of Future Past. Although if you ask me next week, I may say X-Men or I may say Captain America Winter Soldier. But but for now, putting my back against the wall, I'll say X-Men Days of Future Past is my favorite up to this point so far. And I believe the films that have the best shot of overtaking it are Fury, uh, the the new Hunger Games film, and Gone Girl. Um, and, and you know, hey, look, maybe since it's the year of pleasant surprises, maybe Transformers Four. Hey, maybe that one will really jump up and surprise us a lot. Sin City's got the potential. The new Sin City, Dame to Kill For, has the potential to surprise a lot of us, I think. Um, there are several like big films still left to come out this year. And, and then we're getting into Oscar season. And a lot of the really great films get held off until December and whatnot. So lots of good films to come. It's been a great year so far. Let's see how the rest of it goes. All right, time for us to move on to the next question. And the next question today comes to us from Adam Sterling, who writes... Hey, everyone. Big fan of the show. Well, thank you so much, Adam. Uh, let's see. Anyways, my question is, has there been any news on the new Stargate trilogy? Will it be a reboot? A continuation? If so, what's considered canon? Also, what's the budget looking like? Are you guys excited for it? Thanks and keep up the amazing work. Well, um, if for those of you who don't know what Adam is talking about, about a month ago, I guess, it was announced that Roland Emmerich himself, the director of the original Stargate, 
announced that they he was going to develop in Helm, probably direct, uh, a new trilogy of Stargate films. Now, I haven't really heard anything since, and take anything I say at the Great Salt, because I'm not positive about anything. My impression is that it is a reboot of sorts. I, I don't, I think the old Stargate stuff is gone. Um, so I don't believe it's going to be continuation. I don't think they're going to want to wrestle with what's canon and what's not. I think they're going to want this start to start this story over from scratch again, because it's a great story. Now, whether they'll redo the story or whether they'll do a direct proper remake of the original Stargate film, I'm not sure. They may decide to do some different things with it. Um, but I'm excited about it because I, while I did not love all of the Stargate universe stuff, I, I wasn't big on Stargate Atlantis. I wasn't big on Stargate Universe. I think a number of seasons of Stargate SG-1 were really, really good. And I like the original movie. But this world, this universe, this mythos they've set up, I think is just really great sci-fi. And I think this is the type of property to be in the hands of a Roland Emmerich. And so, honestly, I know I've heard some people poo-poo the idea, and that's totally cool. I get where they're coming from. But for me personally... I got to tell you, I'm I'm actually pretty darn excited about it. I am looking forward to this project quite a bit. So uh, let's see how it all turns out. As far as more details, they I haven't really heard anything else since that initial announcement. So we're probably just going to have to sit around and, uh, and wait for a while to hear what they're actually going to be doing with it. All right, let's move to the next question. And the next question today comes to us from Ryan Miller. And Ryan Miller writes, with Ant-Man coming out next year, could we see Janet Van Dyne slash Wasp in that or a standalone? What about Yellow Jacket? Thanks and keep the good stuff coming. Well, thanks a lot for the question, Ryan. I think um, a Wasp is almost an inevitability at this point. Um, as a matter of fact, let me just pull up something here. So I, I think a Wasp at this point is pretty much an inevitability as far as it goes. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people don't remember this, but Wasp came extremely close to being in Avengers. When uh, Joss Whedon wrote the original script for Avengers, I know Chris Lee and I were at a special, we're, we were at the Directors Guild of America and we saw a special screening of um, Avengers with Joss Whedon there and he did a Q&A after it. And he said, one of my favorite parts of the whole Q&A, he said, because people said, was your original draft, did, did Kevin Feige and the crew at Marvel change a bunch of stuff? He goes, well, let's put it this way, Joss Whedon said. The first draft of my Avengers script was very waspy. Um, and, and I believe we then later found out that he didn't even put Black Widow in the original draft of Avengers. And there was Wasp and there were a few other differences. But Joss Whedon loves Wasp. And so he decided she was going to be a part of it. And... Um, uh, and but they I, for whatever reason, good or bad, they took Wasp out. And look, we can't argue with the results. Avengers was Avengers, so we can't argue with the results. But I believe that that kind of the the fact that Whedon wanted her there, and I, I think we're gonna see her. And she's so t closely tied to the whole mythos of Ant Man. And remember, Angeline Lilly has been cast to be an Ant Man. And while nobody has announced anything for sure, um, I believe she's going to be Wasp. That's my belief. I don't have anything really to back that up with, but that um, is my belief for now. All right, let's move on to the next question. And the next question comes to us from Chris C., who writes, Hello, beautiful people of AMC Movie Talk. Well, hello, Chris. Longtime follower, and I love the show. Question. In the new Batman vs. Superman, or in any of the movies to come, do you think there will ever be an epic fight between Batman and Superman like the one we had in The Dark Knight, the cartoon, the animated version? Now, for those of you who don't know what he's talking about, there was an animated movie version of the graphic novel The Dark Knight. Uh, it was basically shot for shot. It was incredible. Anyway, where the both destroyed one another, or am I just wishing here? I think that every nerd would like to see a fight scene like that. Well, thanks a lot for the qu question, Chris. Um, to answer your question, yes. We're going to get a Batman versus Superman fight. You can't have a movie called Batman versus Superman and not have Batman and Superman fight. That, can you imagine the pure amount of nuclear sweaty nerd rage 
Can you, uh, I think, uh, 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 if you say a sphere of collected sweaty nerd rage, I believe that would have the equivalent amount of power as the Tesseract. I, I'm just speculating here. But the amount of nuclear feud sweaty nerd rage there would be if Zack Snyder and Warner Brothers put out a movie called Batman v Superman, and within that movie there was no Batman versus Superman. The outrage would be just, it would be thick. <laughs> it would be tangible. It would run in the streets with the voices of revolution. There would be a lot of anger, and I'll be running at the front of that angry mob with my pitchfork and torch. Uh, we'd all be extremely angry. And now look, the fight in The Dark Knight between Batman and Superman is one of the most epic fights ever in, in comic books. And I love the way it finished. It's just, it was a dramatic fight. People don't think of fights in terms of the dramatic elements of the fight, but it was a dramatic fight. Think about the fight in Return of the Jedi between Luke and Vader in the Emperor's throne room. There was drama to that fight. And the fight between Batman and Superman in Dark Knight is so filled with drama. It's just amazing. And for those of you who don't know about it, Batman wins the fight. And it ends with him... Uh, I might be getting the lines out of order here, but it, it ends with him on top of Clark choking him out and saying, I want you to remember, Clark, you know, with my hand at your throat, I want you to remember the one man who beat you. And it's just, oh, it's one of those moments in comic books that you just, as a kid, you remember I'm always going to remember reading this. Like, and, and I do. I still remember exactly where I was when I read that comic for the first time. Unbelievable. Are we going to get that fight? I, I mean, obviously, I have not read the script, so I cannot say for certain, but I would be so shocked if in a movie that they have titled Batman versus Superman, if they don't give us Batman versus Superman. And it damn well better be glorious. It doesn't have to be as epic and as amazing as the fight in the Dark Knight comics. I don't think anything can ever live up to that. But just make it good. Because if you make it good, us sweaty nerds will take that rage and turn it into pure joygasm, which is even more powerful than that sphere of sweaty nerd rage. Uh, joygasm, nerd joygasm is very, very potent stuff. And so uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say, well, I cannot back it up and I cannot say for certainty. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, yes, Chris, there is going to be that fight in this movie. All right, let's move on to the next question. And the next question today comes to us all the way from Kyle Kizu, who writes, Hey, everyone, what do y'all think about the Let's Be Cops trailer? Um, <laughs> Jake Johnson and Damon Wayans seem like they have the potential to be a great pair. I think it could possibly be a sleeper comedy and turn out really funny. What are your thoughts? I got to tell you, I completely 100% agree with you. And if you'd asked me this question 30 seconds into me watching the trailer, I would have said, no, this looks stupid. First of all, you're just, it's, this is just, you know, new girl, the movie they've gone out and gotten two of the stars of new girl and they've brought them. Although I'm a big fan of Jake Johnson, you brought them in and say, well, now you do a buddy comedy, a uh, buddy comedy, buddy comedy, a buddy cop comedy. I told you I wasn't feeling well today. Anyway. Um, and they felt just like their characters on the show, to be honest with you. At least to me, they did. They, they felt like this was just New Girl, the movie, because they felt like these same characters. But after about 20 to 30 seconds of that trailer, I started to get into it. And it started getting funny. And I started laughing. Look, I, I'm going to admit, for those of you who are pessimistic about this film, I'm with you in the sense that this looks ridiculous. The concept sounds dumb. It's questionable casting on the surface. But I'm telling you, if you have not seen the trailer, download the trailer for it because I laughed more than I thought I would, really. And, and I went from, from the beginning of the trailer of real big pessimism from what I heard about the movie to really looking forward to it. And so I'm dying out of curiosity about this movie. I think it looks like it could be really fun and really funny. So, yes, Kyle, I'm with you. I think this looks really funny and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with it. All right, let's move on to the next question. And the next question today comes to us from D. And D writes, Hey, AMC, great show. I love it. Well, thank you so much, D. We appreciate that. Do you ever think we will see uh, Dave Chappelle back in the limelight uh, as, as in doing movies again? Thanks and bring on the filthy. 
you know, man, I, someday they're going to make a, a movie about Dave Chappelle and what happened and the walking away and, and did he really walk away and, you know, all that kind of stuff. At some point, someday, there's going to be a movie about this. Chappelle had an incredible career going. Um, you know, and some people say he broke down. Some people, he just decided to walk away on his own terms. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of different theories. He's said a few things about why he left and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But will he ever come back as a significant presence in movies again? I mean, you you know, Chappelle used to have a pretty, you know, he had an active movie career near the end of the 90s and the early 2000s. I think you need to start with the question, though, instead of asking, could Dave Chappelle ever have a significant movie career again? I think instead you need to start with the question instead that asks this, a question that asks, would Dave Chappelle ever want to have a active, thriving movie career again? And I'm telling you, I'm not so sure that the answer to that question is yes. I'm not so sure it is. Uh, I don't get the feeling from Dave Chappelle, not like I'm buddies with Dave Chappelle and I've got the inside scoop because I do not. I'm just speculating from what I've seen. That's all I can do. But speculating from what I've seen, I, I've never gotten the impression from him that he's just looking for that chance to get back into the movies. I, I've never gotten the impression from him that he's looking for that opportunity to get the spotlight again. I have never once gotten that impression from Dave Chappelle. And so while it's a very fair question to ask that could he ever have like a thriving movie career again, the, the more important and the very first question you got to ask is, do you think he ever wants to have one of those again? He's got all the money in the world. And I'm just not sure he's got a desire for it. And maybe I'm wrong. So, okay, let's go theoretically. Could he have a thriving movie career uh, if he so chose to want to come back and do it? I'm not sure. Uh, because Chappelle's a really big personality. And I I'm just, I'm not sure he could. I know you couldn't just lead off with a, a 40 or $50 million film starring Dave Chappelle. He'd probably have to, to have a couple supporting roles, really establish himself again, that, and get the, the audience used to seeing him again and used to laughing with him again, and then maybe. It's it's certainly possible. But I think you are you get log jammed right away with that first part was would he even want to? Um, and, you know, when you're a guy who's had the success that, that Dave has had and, um, and whatever, maybe you don't need to and maybe you don't want to. So... I, I'm going to say the answer to your question is no, but not because I don't think he has the ability or the fan following, whatever, to achieve it, but rather because I think we get stuck at that first part of the question, which is I don't think he even wants it. So that's just my opinion. I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope we get to see Dave Chappelle do a lot more stuff. But as for right now, I just don't see it happening. All right, let's move on to the next question. And the next question today comes to us from Brian Lyndon Johnson, who writes, Love the show. I agree with your points about why DC Cinematic Universe should be kept separate from TV series, from the TV show. So basically what he's saying is I, I really don't believe, well, first of all, I don't believe that Warner Brothers has any desire to have their TV shows and their movie properties share the same universe. Um, and I don't believe they should. I believe that would be a really dumb, dumb, stupid mistake. Uh, because all it would end up doing is handcuffing your movies and it would end up handcuffing your TV shows and having to rely and stay in continuity with the movies and the TV show. It's just stupid. Give them both their freedom to do whatever they want to do. That's the way I see it. Anyway, it says, I agree with your points about why the DC Cinematic Universe should be kept separate from the TV series, but if they were joined, wouldn't it ensure the, majority, the major storylines, Hush, Flashpoint, Nightfall, aren't watered down into low-budget TV episodes. Although I love Arrow and the Flash series, uh, I, 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 although I love Arrow and the Flash series is going to be great, I wouldn't want a two-episode Flashpoint TV adaptation that makes the story less likely to be used for a movie. Um, well, thanks a lot for the question, Brian, but I, I think you're asking in reverse. I think, like, you mentioned Nightfall, okay? For those who don't know what the Nightfall series is, that is the storyline where Bane uh, eventually breaks Bruce Wayne's back, uh, then uh, Bruce goes get Jean-Paul to take on the mantle of the Bat, or, or, who's known as Azrael. He becomes Batman. Uh, he grows and grows and grows, and he eventually defeats Bane, but also Azrael, as Batman, is going a little bit power nuts and power crazy. He attacks Robin and all this kind of stuff, and eventually Bruce Wayne has to come back, even though he's not fully healed from his broken back, and he has to take on and take out Azrael to get back the mantle of the Bat. 
It's a big, long story arc. I think, though, as long as you keep the, the movie and the TV universes separate, that's the only thing that ensures you aren't going to get the, that type of a storyline in the TV shows. You merge the TV and the cinematic universes, and now you're talking about cross-pollinating those storylines in TV and movies. And I think, once again, that would be stupid. I think it would be absolutely ridiculous. Um, so I think if you want to make sure that, number one, I don't think like a storyline like Flashpoint is ever going to get done anyway. But that being said, if you want to ensure that a Flashpoint doesn't get used in lower budget TV stuff, and let's face it, some TV stuff is pretty damn low budget. But keep in mind, some TV stuff is also pretty damn good these days. So they kind of balance each other out. But 